More than okay. a little sweat. Just shut up. You can... Both of you. Grandpa, give me a hug. the smartest guy in the room. Any room in the world. Scorpion, CBS Mondays this fall. It's the Room Store's huge Sealy Super Sale. Get queen sets at $2.45. Pillow top queen sets, $3.45. A silk wool and memory foam pillow top queen, $4.95. Arizona's number one volume Sealy Store. At the Room Store. Imagine coconut sandwiches. Uh-huh. Or maybe vanilla cream puff pudding pops. No, I'm partial to mint chocolate chip ice cream bars. But you need butterscotch. Mm. Your strawberry fruit bars are fabulous. Kiwi would be even better. Mm. Everyone loves our fudge, moo, and crunch bars. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? I love Sunday cups so much, I eat them on Monday. And Tuesday. And, and Wednesday. Wednesday? It's the Room Store's huge super sale. Save up to 75%. Get this weight cloth sofa, $275. This blended leather sofa, $375. This plush reclining sofa, $575. Or this pillow back sectional, $675. At the Room Store. At Bacula. We're gonna have some fun. In CIS New Orleans, Tuesdays this fall. Firefighters called out to Camelback Mountain today for back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back rescues. How a good Samaritan ended up a victim themselves. Stuck on a roller coaster, trapped for hours at Six Flags in Maryland. What firefighters there had on their hands. And a tragic ripple through the world of motorsports. A young race car driver is dead. And a fellow competitor, one of the most well-known in NASCAR, is under intense public scrutiny. Did he do it on purpose, or was it just a horrible accident? Good evening. I'm Adam Longo. Right now, NASCAR driver Tony Stewart is the target of a police investigation in upstate New York after a fellow driver died on the racetrack. This video here shows the accident that led up to the confrontation where a driver walking across the track was hit by Stewart's car. We want to warn you here, some of you might find this video to be disturbing. Now, this is a sprint car race on a dirt track at Canadaga Motorsports Park. Stewart and 20-year-old driver Kevin Ward Jr. involved in an accident there in turn two. Ward's car ends up in the wall. He gets out, points angrily at Stewart for allegedly causing the wreck. At that point, Stewart's car clipped Ward and he tumbled through the air, landing about 25 feet from where he was standing. Police investigating whether it was an accident or whether Stewart hit Ward on purpose. As we speak at this time, there is no evidence in hand or no facts that would support a criminal charge or support criminal intent on the part of anybody. 
Now, Tony Stewart released this statement on his website about the incident, saying, quote, there aren't words to describe the sadness I feel about the accident that took the life of Kevin Ward Jr. It's a very emotional time for all involved, and it's the reason I've decided not to participate in today's race at Watkins Glen. My thoughts and prayers are with his family, friends, and everyone affected by this tragedy. Now, Tony Stewart is a very accomplished stock car driver. That's the car you see right here. It's fully enclosed around a roll cage, an aluminum body. Now, with this accident, Stewart was racing in this car here. This is a sprint car. It's an open wheel car. You see the exposed roll cage here. It's got a big wing on the top, and you can see how it would kind of obstruct a driver's visibility, limiting it to the left and to the right. Certainly a horrifying scene there for spectators in the grandstands. I talked with a few of them last night. We also talked to a local radio personality and sprint car driver today about what it's like for the drivers inside those cars. CBS 5's Allison Blair with us live now for that part of the story. Adam, Bruce St. James has been involved with sprint car racing for well over a decade. He says Kevin Ward Jr.'s reaction wasn't uncommon. On the track, tempers are often on display. Saturday, this split-second decision cost a young man his life. Tony Stewart just hit that guy. Bruce St. James called what happened tragic, but said Kevin Ward Jr.'s actions weren't out of the ordinary. It's not unusual. It happens every night all, all at short tracks all across the country. He felt that Tony Stewart had run him up the racetrack or caused the accident, and that's why he jumped out. From local dirt track races all the way up to NASCAR, this kind of behavior has become part of the racing culture. Oh, he's mad at somebody. Yes, he is. He's hot. angry at somebody. In 2002, Kurt Busch ran out onto the track to get in a driver's face after he was run into the wall. Here's a video from Dover, Delaware, back in 2007. When the same driver almost took out a member of Tony Stewart's pit crew. And there goes his car. And in 2011, in South Carolina, Kevin Harvick's car rolls into a wall after he jumps out to have words with another driver. St. James thinks any rules aimed at trying to contain drivers' emotions just wouldn't work. I think you can make a rule saying you can't get out of your race car and shake your fist or, or, or uh, express your displeasure at another driver. Bam! I think it's a whole other thing to enforce it. Another factor in last night's crash, visibility. Spectators we talked to said the part of the track where the crash happened isn't lit very well, and Kevin Ward Jr. was dressed in an all-black race suit. Back to you. We'll be hearing a lot more in the coming days and weeks. Allison, thank you. Well, today's NASCAR race in Watkins Glen, New York, went on without Tony Stewart behind the wheel, but look at this. A Valley native, Glendale's Michael McDowell, uninjured after this vicious crash. Watch his number 95 car there careen into the catch fence. A car spun in front of him. He had no time to react. McDowell plowed into him. Fortunately, no one was injured. After the crash, McDowell said he felt blessed to have walked away. All new at 10 tonight, major damage in Rye. Check out these pictures. A storm blew through the area, knocking about seven trailers off their foundation and blowing one onto its side. The Gila County Sheriff said some of the awnings were blown off and up into power lines, and that caused a power outage in the area. A little bit of everything out there tonight, Steve. Yeah, that's what happens when you get into one of these isolated thunderstorms. You get some very gusty conditions in the downdrafts, and most of the valley saw some dust in that southeast edge of the valley tonight because of the outflow from a thunderstorm that was up to the east of us. There's the valley pinpointed. I'm going to take you in tight with Live 5 Doppler radar, and you can see what's happen happened over the past hour or so in terms of showers and thunderstorms around the Chandler area, Queen Creek, and also towards southern sections of Gilbert and the Ahwatukee foothills. A little bit of light shower activity after the remnants of a thunderstorm have worked their way into that southeastern part of town. And also some blowing dust reported in the Apache Junction area. Your forecast for tomorrow has more of the same on the way. In fact, we'll have all the details coming up in just a few minutes. Adam? Steve, thank you. A Queen Creek man in serious condition tonight after being struck by lightning at Wood Canyon Lake. First responders say the man had an entry wound in his right shoulder and exit wounds in both feet. He was taken to Payson Medical Center. Witnesses on scene said it was storming up pretty bad and the victim used his metal folding camping chair to try to protect himself from the hail. And that's when he got struck.
A triple rescue on Camelback Mountain sent one person to the hospital. This comes just days after two people died while climbing in the area, including a teenager and an off-duty Phoenix firefighter. CBS 5's Sean Klein was there today where firefighters had that climbing accident certainly on their minds, Sean. Yeah, Adam, firefighters told me it's still fresh. And when they got this call today, they were thinking about that accident. But firefighters told me they put together a quick rescue plan and pulled off three people consecutively off the side of that mountain in less than an hour. Firefighters had another rescue call in Echo Canyon, the same part of Camelback Mountain where one of their own died on Friday. 50-year-old Gary Johnstone fell while mountain climbing. Well, to be quite honest, you know, I still do have a heavy heart, and it is something I've been thinking about, obviously, for the last few days. Phoenix Fire Captain Ruben Saavedra personally knew John Stone, who was off-duty, and fell alongside 15-year-old Trevor Krause, who died later that evening. Sunday afternoon, Saavedra was heading another rescue in the same area. Since it's so fresh in our memory now, I'm sure that in the back of their mind as they're going up, they're probably thinking about the dangers, you know. This time, it's heat exhaustion. Susan White, a marathon runner, was visiting Arizona when it got too hot. Well, physically, I was fine, but then I started, I just started overheating and I started seeing purple dots. A good Samaritan stopped to help White rehydrate, but on their way down, firefighters found that good Samaritan struggling too. She was treated at a valley hospital. White and another woman were given water and released to go home. These mountains here, they can be really dangerous. They can be unforgiving, as unfortunately like if we've seen this last week. So again, just be really cautious. No, think about the safety stuff. And firefighters said every mountain in this valley is dangerous, so they wanted to stress, bring enough water if you're planning on hiking or climbing at any mountain here in the valley. We're live in Phoenix. Sean Klein, CBS 5 News. A very good tip, Sean. Thank you. Fast forward to tomorrow. That's when the man convicted of killing a Glendale police officer will be back in court to begin the sentencing phase of his trial. Brian Holsey shot and killed an officer during a traffic stop over seven years ago. Last month, the jury decided he will be eligible for the death penalty. An old University of Arizona frat house is getting a facelift. The university is spending $1.8 million to turn the house into high-end student housing. The house was formula, formerly occupied by the Pi Gamma Delta fraternity, which is being investigated after a student fell from a ventilation tower in April. The rents will range from seven to $7,800 a year. MMA legend Tito Ortiz fighting to make a better Arizona for one 11-year-old battling a rare blood disease. Mia McPoland's body can't produce red blood cells, and she depends on blood donors to provide life-saving transfusions every month. Well, Mia's mother reached out to Tito on Twitter, asking for his help to keep her daughter alive. Today, Tito challenged his fans to join his fight for life and donate blood to help keep Mia healthy. I'm a professional fighter, and uh, you got to be, you know, humanitarian by giving back to society. And this is what I can do to hopefully help this uh, girl's life to live a lot longer. You know, she's a wonderful, beautiful little girl. It's more than just blood. It's giving someone the gift of life. People who donated blood today got the chance to meet Mia and Tito Ortiz and received a personalized autograph picture. Well, a black teenager is dead in Missouri. He was unarmed but shot dead by police. Now angry protesters are demanding swift action. And find out what firefighters were facing at Six Flags in Maryland after a number of people got stuck for hours on a roller coaster. And after a tragic day for the racing community, a comeback story at the racetrack that lifted everyone's spirits a little today. We're coming right back. Stop! I'm taking a cruise and a crossing guard shoes. Monday, they braved the weather and the traffic to protect our kids. Now I'm putting on the uniform and hitting the curb at my own elementary school. Monday on CBS 5 Morning News. Hey, buddy. How you feeling? I still think we can go. There'll be other games. We can still have some fun today. CenturyLink Prison TV delivers what cable can. The freedom to watch TV exactly how you want. The wireless set-top box lets you put your TV almost anywhere without being tied to a TV outlet. CenturyLink Prison TV. Call now or visit a store to find out more. You in heaven, wrapped in luxury. You in 
action. You in motion. You in luck. Play in style. Talking Stick Resort, Scottsdale. Win one of eight Camaros or big cash and prizes with Ride on the Wild Side. If you've been injured in an accident, call Goldberg and Osborne. We'll help you get all the money you're entitled to. There is often more than one insurance policy available to pay for your loss. Without our help, you may never even learn about these other insurance policies. For over 20 years, we've been fighting for accident victims and protecting your consumer rights. Call Goldberg and Osborne, the injury lawyers. There's new questions about Vernon Parker's ethical problems. Parker raised nearly $450,000 for a political campaign. Then he quit. But after quitting, he raised nearly a quarter million more. Parker should refund the money, but he hasn't. It's not his first scandal. The Small Business Administration said Parker's company submitted false information and conducted itself with a lack of business integrity. Vernon Parker, an ethically challenged politician Arizona can't trust. At Lexus, we pursue groundbreaking advances in safety by taking our eyes off the road and focusing on drivers. Real people, real distractions, without real consequences. The result? Our gold standard of safety. And the only place you'll find it is at the Lexus Golden Opportunity Sales Event. Lease the 2014 ES350 for $349 a month for 27 months, and we'll make your first month's payment. See your Lexus dealer. CBS 5 News is brought to you by More Furniture. You're watching CBS 5 News. Asking tough questions, getting you answers, telling it like it is. Angry residents in Ferguson, Missouri are demanding answers following the weekend death of an unarmed African-American teenager at the hands of police. And now the Justice Department is monitoring that investigation. Reporter Marley Hall with the story. Police officers in riot gear faced off against several dozen protesters in Ferguson, Missouri Sunday night, where anger is running high following the death of 18-year-old Michael Brown at the hands of a police officer. Earlier in the day, an emotional crowd gathered at police headquarters calling for justice. This is going to be a long journey for us and a battle because no one is really telling us the truth of what happened to my nephew. The shooting occurred near an apartment complex in the predominantly black suburb Saturday afternoon. St. Louis County Police Chief John Belmar said it all began when the officer encountered two people, one of whom was brown. He says somehow a struggle began when one of the men pushed the officer as he was trying to get out of his squad car. After that, the officer went back, came back out of the car. He exited his vehicle, and there was a shooting that occurred where the officer, in fact, shot the subject. Piaget Crenshaw lives in the neighborhood and said the officer shot Brown multiple times, even after he put his arms up. He shot him in the face and in the chest and he fell down and shot him multiple times. The St. Louis County Police Department is handling the investigation. Attorneys with the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division have been instructed to monitor development. Marley Hall, CBS News. Now, several protesters were angry that Brown's body remained on the street for hours after the killing. The officer, who wasn't identified as a six-year veteran and has been put on paid administrative leave. Well, we are on the wildfire watch tonight in Washington State. Firefighters with their hands full battling a dozen wildfires across the state. Crews say they are starting to gain the upper hand on about half of them. The so-called Snag Canyon fire started more than a week ago and has burned about 9,400 acres. Firefighters say it's now 25% contained. Investigators believe it was lightning that caused that fire. ISIS militants and Kurdish forces battling each other for key cities in northern Iraq. A pile of dirt across the highway. That's the first line of defense for Iraqi Kurds who are fighting against the ISIS militants. The Kurdish fighters say the biggest threat is armored ISIS convoys led by suicide bombers in speeding vehicles. Now, the Kurds have gotten some help from American airstrikes, but everyone here says they need more. Well, our weapons are sort of 
the old Iraqi army weapons. Unfortunately, the weapons that they have seized from the Iraqi army that uh, was from the U.S. Army was um, they're very advanced weapons. So we do need better weapons. The ISIS militants say they're fighting to build an Islamic state. The Kurds are defending a region that's still not quite an independent state. Well, check this out. Yikes, 24 people stuck near the top of a roller coaster at Six Flags in Maryland. Fire officials called out this afternoon to the Joker's Jinx roller coaster, but this clearly was no joke. All the riders sitting upright, fortunately not upside down. It took several hours to get them all down, just taking them out there one by one with a ladder truck. Six Flags America spokesperson said it's not clear yet what caused the ride to stop. You know what isn't going to stop? Apparently wind and yeah. dust and rain this week, it's on the way. It's on the way. Tuesday looks like the, the day when we could get a real widespread monsoon storm rolling to the valley. So you've been warned. That's right. the day to watch out for. <laughs> Today we'd have a bit, a bit of activity. You could see it around the mountains. And we had some blowing dust advisories, mainly in that southeastern edge of the valley, out towards Queen Creek and Chandler, Florence. And we'll see more of these, especially tomorrow afternoon and on Tuesday as well. As we go into the work week, we're expecting more showers and thunderstorms. Here's a satellite and radar picture. There's the valley pinpointed for you. You can see those showers are working their way away from us. The lightning strikes are dying off and things are really settling down across the valley on Live 5 Doppler. Here's the valley. We had that shower down here and it's tapered off over the South Mountain area and pretty much out of here. So if you're expecting any big downpours tonight and major thunderstorms, no, I don't think it's going to be happening tonight. And we'll cool down about 86 degrees by tomorrow morning with partly cloudy skies at noontime. We'll get up to 101 and then we'll watch for those storms to develop once again over the mountains. Daytime high temperatures is pretty typical for this time of year with a forecast high of 106 here in Phoenix. The dew point is up. It's going up a little more because of this southerly flow that's been coming over us, and that, of course, is a monsoon moisture flow. Here's Monday afternoon, mainly up in the upper elevations, spotty, isolated showers and thunderstorms developing in the daytime heating. But watch Tuesday. Big cluster down south in Mexico. This will push a lot of moisture up into the state. Right now, it's projected to go a little bit west of Phoenix, but that will probably change as we get closer to Tuesday. So Tuesday looks like a pretty active day in terms of the monsoon. Statewide, we'll see some pretty severe thunderstorms popping up. 104 today's actual high. 104 is the normal high. 116, the record set back in 2003. A little bit of an east-south breeze with that outflow from that thunderstorm that was out over the Superstition Mountains and down south of us, south and east of us, and that cooled us down about 93 right now on the hour. Things are settling down right now, but we'll wait for the afternoon heating to pick up and those thunderstorms to increase. As I mentioned, more of them coming into Tucson and Phoenix into Tuesday and heavier, of course, back out towards the White Mountains. Here are your overnight lows tonight. 69 in Sedona, 64 in Prescott, 62 in Payson, 86 here in town and back up to 106 tomorrow. A little bit warmer, 89 in Prescott and 88 in Payson. Seven-day forecast with the complete weekend in view. Here are your chances for showers increasing, as we mentioned, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then drying out as we end the work week. Not bad for mid-August, though. We'll take it, Steve. Thanks. Well, two Valley residents are celebrating a major milestone, and we'd like to extend a very special happy birthday wish tonight. We don't do this a lot, but it's well-deserved here. Jack Wetmore and Joan Peterson both turned 100 years old last week. Their friends and family had a party for them at a church in Mesa. You have to have a perfect roommate that I had for 70 years, and that makes it perfect. Another member of the church turned 101 back in July. Happy birthday to all of you. Fast forward to Monday now. Friends and family will be gathering to honor the life and work of a Valley legend, Bill Thompson from Wallace and Ladmo, died July 23rd at the age of 82. And Monday, a special tribute will be held remembering the man who brought joy to so many Valley families. The tribute will be held next Monday, August 11th, at the Harkins Seneca Pre Theater in Tempe Marketplace. Doors, they open at 6. The tribute starts at 7.30. The theater will be taking donations in Wallace's honor on behalf of the Banner Health Foundation for Cardin Children's Hospital and the Arizona Humane Society. Joe. Such a legend. The Arizona Cardinals look sensational in their exhibition opener. The D-backs going for the sweep of the Rockies and Phil Mickelson in contention at the PGA Championship. Plus, what did the Rattlers have in common with LeBron James and Johnny Manziel? They're headed to Cleveland. Sports is next.
better, 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 better easier, 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 faster. faster. Introducing the new CBS5 app. Spontaneous happiness. The inevitable result of your efforts to get everyone in the family together in a place where they can relax and be themselves. Savor the moment, Mom. And don't be afraid to join the fun. Fill the family, then thrill the family with two for fun. Get an extra large one topping pizza plus 30 tokens for $19.99. Peter Piper Pizza. Everyone grab a slice. Don't adjust your TV. Call Express Flooring for big summer savings of 70 to 43%. Plus, pay no interest until 2016. Call now. Express Flooring is the best. Call 800 Express. Strong families are the building blocks of a strong society. As a juvenile court judge, I know that what happens to kids in their early years sets the foundation for a lifetime. It's crucial that families have the tools they need to provide stable, nurturing environments for their young children. That's why First Things First partners with communities across Arizona to strengthen families and empower parents in their role as their child's first teacher. We all have a shared responsibility for making our community stronger. First Things First, Arizona. The real facts on Cold Stone. Doug Ducey helped build and grow Cold Stone to over 1,400 stores worldwide. Cold Stone was named number one franchiser. Doug was selected for the ASU Business School Hall of Fame. Doug has strong support from Cold Stone people and those who bought the company from him. As a franchisee of Cold Stone Creamery, I felt the support uh, not only from Doug, but his entire team. One word that comes to mind when I think of Doug is ethics, ethical. At Kia's once-a-year sign-in and drive-it sales event, it's never been easier to get behind the wheel of a new Kia. With zero down and zero to its signing, you can drive off in a fun-to-drive 2014 Soul or the sporty 2015 Optima LX. Both are backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And KBB.com just named Kia as 2014's best value brand. Get your best deal at Kia's sign-in and drive-it sales event. Sign and drive a Soul or Optima LX for zero down and zero to at least signing for qualified lessees. See your local Kia dealer before this offer ends. Don't adjust your TV. Call Express Flooring for big summer savings of 70 to 43%. Pay no interest until 2016. And Express will even move your furniture for free. Call now. CBS 5 Sports is brought to you by CenturyLink Prism. One preseason game doesn't make a season. It's a small sample. The Arizona Cardinals' first exhibition outing leaves a lot to like. Routing Houston, the offense was precise, the defense dominant, and the special teams were special. Unlike last year, the offense knows Coach Bruce Arian's system, and it showed. They played poised with confidence, scoring on the opening drive and putting up 17 first-quarter points. The defense was fantastic. It was a great start for what could be a great team. Everybody's confidence is, is so much different than it was last year. There's, there's not that, you know, half a second of, you know, unsuredness, if that's a word, in the back of your mind right before the ball gets snapped. I'm proud of this team, though, where we came out of fault today, and, and our coach challenged us early. You know, we needed three and out, we needed to score on the first drive, you know, that'll let us know um, how bad we want it. The Arizona Rattlers had to wait 45 days for another shot at San Jose, their biggest rival. A squad that snapped their regular season 14-game win streak and held them to a season-low 29 points. AFL West Finals win or go bye-bye. Rattlers undefeated at home, and the Sabercats would get neutered. Quarterback Nick Davila, a fantastic game, finds Rod Windsor, watches this, breaks a tackle, Arizona goes up 23. Arizona pours it on Davila. Quick slant to Tyson Poots for six. It's all good. Then it's Davila, the bomb to Windsor. The Latin laser throws eight touchdowns and runs for two more. Rattlers advance to their fourth straight Arena Bowl, 72-56. They'll face the Cleveland Gladi Gladiators August 23rd in Cleveland. You know, with all the stuff I've been through personally as a team, we've been through, um, God is absolutely amazing. And uh, we're going to the Arena Bowl for a, a three-peat. LeBron, Johnny Football, now the Arena Bowl in Cleveland. You're in the middle of the... And KFG, baby. I'm coming to town. Let's go. They talking about Johnny Football and uh, LeBron. I told them to be ready for KFG. <laughs> Meanwhile, D-backs going for the sweep of the Rockies. Mark Trumbo, a couple hits on Saturday. Doing some work in the first. Opposite field smash down the line off Franklin Morales scores a pair. Wade Miley looking to bounce back after giving up 10 runs to KC. 
taken out of the yard. Ben Paulson, two run shot, ties it. Miley gives up three runs in six innings. Tenth inning, tied at three. Oliver Perez wants this one back. Chris Dickerson, solo shot to the pool and right. D-backs lose 5-3. Tony Stewart didn't race in today's Sprint Cup race and might not be behind the wheel anytime soon. Saturday in a dirt track race in upstate New York, Stewart struck and killed Sprint Cup driver Kevin Ward Jr. after he tried to confront him on the track. Stewart pulled out of today's race at Watkins Glen and is cooperating with authorities. Regan Smith stepped in. Lap 56 against Ugly. Ryan Newman spins out and takes Michael McDowell with him, causing an hour and 21 minute delay. You gotta feel good for A.J. Allmendinger in this one. In 2012, he was suspended by NASCAR for failing a drug test. The 32-year-old picks up his first Spring Cup win. Afterwards, Allmendinger holding a heavy heart. Uh, give me, first off, all of our condolences here at NASCAR, this whole NASCAR family for the Ward family, uh, racing with heavy hearts today. Um, I, I can't imagine what they're going through. So we're, uh, we're a community here. We're all thinking about you. Uh, my gosh, I can't believe we won a NASCAR Sprint Cup race. Final round of the PGA Championship was phenomenal. Phil Mickelson looking for his sixth major on 11 for birdie. Grabs a share of the lead of 15 under. World number one, Rory McIlroy, so good. Knocks down the eagle on 10 and birdies 13 for a share of the lead. Phil drops a shot on 16. McIlroy doesn't let up. Birdie on 17. Luscious to go to 16 under. On 18, Phil needs an eagle to possibly force a playoff and just comes up short, finishing one shot back at 15 under. McElroy, check this out, great hand, saves the lid of the cup. He wins his third straight tournament and fourth slam at 16 under. You know, I, I didn't think in my wildest dreams I'd have a summer like this. Um, you know, I've just played the best golf of my life and uh, just really got it out today. And I kind of ran out of steam there after 12, after I made that good par putt. Wasn't able to get a couple of birdies coming in like I needed to, but it was sure fun getting off to a quick start and getting right in the thick of it. And this was great golf in today's final round, and the Cardinals are back at work this week, getting ready to go on the road to face Minnesota on Saturday. I was just going to say, I've got no room to talk with my love for NASCAR, but when you hear yells coming from the sports office and you go in and there's a golf tournament on TV, you know it's good. It was a spectacular end to that tournament. I'll tell you what, you had the big names, a lot of big shots, and a great finish. Phil almost forced a playoff. All right, we're coming right back with more. On air, on your smartphone, and online. Monsoon coverage on CBS 5 News. Want to experience that yes feeling for yourself? It's easy with Con's Yes Money. Even when other stores say no to credit, we say yes. That's because we finance you with our own yes money. In fact, we've said yes to over 5 million people. Want to be next? Just go to cons.com to apply and get approved the same day. Because yes is a great feeling. The Fitzgerald family said yes. So did James Bray and the Jacksons. In fact, more and more Valley residents are saying yes to SRP Community Solar. They said yes to a portion of their energy coming from a local solar plant for a small monthly premium. Plus, there is no upfront investment for rooftop panels. So it's easy for homeowners and renters to say yes to clean energy. So what do you say? Learn more at srpcommunitysolar.com. Doug Ducey says, judge me by my business record. Okay, here are the stone-cold facts. Hundreds of Ducey's franchises started with loans backed by the federal government. That means you and me. 46% of these taxpayer-guaranteed loans went unpaid when the businesses failed. Ducey pocketed millions in franchise fees. Taxpayers lost millions to pay the money back. Ducey's business record? A costly taxpayer bailout. Doug Ducey didn't deserve our money. He doesn't deserve our vote. I'm here with Andrew. She just shopped at Staples and get her son Weston ready for the fourth grade. Let's shop for the same item, see the difference. Come on. Compared to Staples, you could have saved over a dollar on Elmer's glue sticks and on rollback another 202 on Lysol wipes. Wow. You like that, dude? These are mine. These are yours. Let's go. Here at Walmart, you could have saved over three dollars on batteries. Seriously? Video games, buddy. Yes. Ninety-nine forty. That's a savings of over twenty-six dollars or twenty-one percent. Nice. Bring your last back-to-school receipts at Walmart. Compare prices. See for yourself. 
The 2012 election saw a dramatic rise in the number of provisional ballots statewide. This year, please help by doing the following. If you vote by mail, get your ballot mailed before August 22nd. Vote it, sign it, seal it, send it. If you've already mailed your ballot, do not vote at your polling place. If you want to track your ballot or find your polling place, go to azsos.gov. Hi, I'm State Election Director Christina Estes Werther. Thank you for helping us address this problem. Go to azsos.gov for more information. What do Scott Smith and Obama have in common? They both support more government control over your health care. Experts knew most Arizonans who could be forced into access through Obamacare's Medicaid expansion already had private insurance. Until their plans were taken away by Obamacare, that is. Instead of fighting for us so we could keep our plans and get government out of the way, Smith supported Obamacare's Medicaid expansion. That's not the leadership we need. All right, final look at the seven-day forecast. Increasing chances of thunderstorms going into Tuesday. Monsoon starting to pick up. 106 tomorrow, 102 on Tuesday, and watch out for those thunderstorms. Cooler temperatures, okay, though. We'll take it. We'll wake up with us for all the latest news, weather, and sports, 4.30 a.m. Steve Gary will be here. <laughs> yeah. Hardest working man in show business. <laughs> Have a great week. CBS5AZ.com, your online home for free news and information. Brought to you by Goldberg and Osborne, the injury lawyers. Call 1-800-THE-EAGLE. CBS 5 News gives you the Valley's only 30-minute newscast at 6.30. Fast-paced, to the point, and always telling it like it is. Give us 30 minutes, and we'll give you the news. CBS 5 News, weeknights at 6.30. It's back to school time, and that means it's time to replace that old beat-up dorm room or college apartment mattress. Big names like Sealy, Simmons, Therapeutic, and the popular pressure-relieving healthcare memory foam mattresses. It's all right here at American Lifestyle Furniture. Want to take your dorm room from plain to insane? Then you gotta go to Ross. You'll find everything you need for so much less. Look at all the great stuff we got. <laughs> and we saved so much. You'll get organized, colorized, <laughs> and accessorized. Looks amazing. <laughs> totally. So if you want to save a bunch and be the envy of your dorm, you gotta go to Ross. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go to Ross. Happiness. The inevitable result of your efforts to get everyone in the family together in a place where they can relax and be themselves. Savor the moment, Mom. And don't be afraid to join the fun. Fill the family, then thrill the family with two for fun. Get an extra large one topping pizza plus 30 tokens for $19.99. Peter Piper Pizza. Everyone grab a slice. This election, we must defend our way of life and secure our border, but we must also defend the family and marriage. I am the only candidate for governor who stood up to the gay lobby and supported SB 1062, a bill that would have protected religious freedom and all Arizonans from frivolous gay rights lawsuits. We must stand up to liberal bullies. With marriage and moral values under attack, please join me in defending faith, family, and freedom. If your car's side glass gets broken, trust Safe Flight. Safe Flight has more glass in stock than anyone, and we'll get you back on your way fast. Thank you so much. Good as new. That's another Safe Flight advantage. Safe Flight repair, Safe Flight replace. You know, if you look at the expenses, you're going to see that we are way over. Are you still with us, Jake? Yeah, you divide the big numbers on the top with the little numbers on the bottom, I get it. No, that's long division. Here, um, this is a budget report. And? We're in the red. Good. Red is bad. Jake, we had to pay for three cars that you crashed into. Hey, I didn't crash into any cars, okay? They crashed getting out of my way, so... And we solved that case. What's the problem? Okay, how about reimbursing a woman after you broke down her door and smashed her windows? That was Dez's fault. He gave me the wrong address, so bill him. What about all the meals and drinks you've been writing off? Business expenses. Oh. Point is, we need to bring in more business. A lot more. Fine. I'll bring in more business. But you know what? Why don't you two bring in more business? I have to go. I think you'll understand? I should have told him. Not a chance. Let him suffer. Our special detective, Jared Boyle, nodded and released the oil baron. He wasn't the guy. Jared was
keeping his pathological crying in check. <laughs> but his OCD was overpowering him. He quickly fixed the wrinkle in the oil baron's collar. <laughs> the only crime this baron had committed was being a cuckold. But if he didn't kill the insurance magnate, then who did? He raced to his vintage muscle car, a subconscious phallic reminder of his many shortcomings. <laughs> like the clothes, the drinking and womanizing, this car was part of an elaborate disguise which covered the very fabric of our hero's So, Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen, it appears my muse has descended upon us. The original special detective, Mr. Jake Doyle. <laughs> Business so bad you work with him. No, Jake, he insisted on working with you. Jared Boyle is Jared Boyle. Wants you or no deal. Money pays well. I told you, you need the money. That's right, Jake, you need the money, and I need to spend time with my muse. It's perfect. What are you doing with my scotch? I was saving this. Live in the moment. Pearson, we loved the special detective. Yeah, of course you did. That reminds me, I've got signed copies for everyone. Oh. Desmond, Rose, Melody. Oh, thank yes. you. Doesn't have enough pictures for you. To Desmond, the brains of the operation. <laughs> Desmond, please. Oh. oh. And this is why I'm here. A ripe case on which I'm basing the next special detective novel. Killer chokehold, murder in the hexagon. Oh. Thank you so much. Uh, poor gladiator Murray here has been murdered and we need to solve it. Desmond, please continue. Thank you, Garrison. Murray Peckford, a champion MMA mixed martial arts fighter who turned businessman a couple years ago and formed his own fighting association in St. John's. But.